for the introduction and thank you for the coming. So the title is a called FPT approximation algorithms for graph covering problems. So some of the words may not be um, familiar to the, some of the audiences, but I'm gonna try to explain every word in this title. Okay. So let's um, start um, with what I really mean by problems in the title. Okay. So every problem I'm gonna talk about in this, uh, in this, in this talk is uh, something called mathematical optimization problem, and then they will have the following structure. Okay. So as input, we're gonna get something um, i that implicitly defines a set of feasible solutions x. And then also objective function f that, send, that assigns each positive real value to each feasible solution. Okay. And so given this input, we want to find a feasible solution small x that maximizes or minimizes um, this objective function. And so we, want to, we basically want to design an algorithm um, to, this, to do this task. And our, we want that our algorithm to be efficient. So by which I mean that we want our algorithm to run polynomial time in the size of i, so this absolute value in i. So this um, formally um, is a number of bits to represent i. But in this talk, I'm only going to um, talk about graph problems. So we can think of the uh, size of i as a number of vertices. Okay, so this is uh, what I mean by efficiency. So uh, this is a discrete math seminar, so I'm only going to talk about discrete optimization or combinatorial optimization problems. So um, I don't know but, like very formal definition, but the only difference is that uh, the set of feasible solutions x is a finite set. Okay. So given this definition, let's look at one example of an optimization problem. So this one is a cold vertex cover. So input is just like one um, undirected simple graph G. So given this graph, um, a subset C of vertices is called um, feasible if there's a no edge in the graph after moving C. In other words, um, C intersects every edge of the graph. Okay? And, then, so, and then F of C is just a cardinality of C. And then we want to find the smallest such set. So this is like well-defined problem, very simple. But surprisingly, um, Richard Karp in 72 proved that this problem is NP-hard, which means that unless um, P is equal to NP, there will be no polynomial time algorithm that computes the uh, minimum vertex cover. Okay, so this is a very surprising result. And then after this result, um, like people spent 30 or 40 years to classify the complexity of each optimization problem. And then um, Scriber um, in 2003, in his uh, one of the monumental textbooks that has uh, two, more than 2,000 pages, he said almost every computer optimization problem has since been either proved to be polynomial time solvable or NP complete. Okay. So we know almost um, every natural, natural computer optimization problems. Okay. So then we can ask, are we done or not? Of course, uh, I'm claiming that we are not done yet, because actually. If you look at these problems, like almost all of them are NP-hard, but if I quote somebody, um, many problems are NP-hard, but they need to solve be, be solved anyway. Okay. So actually, um, there are numerous optimization problems that are being solved in our smartphones or like data centers, but they are all solved by some heuristics with no formal guarantees. So as a mathematicians or theoretical computer scientists, we want to design some algorithms with formal guarantees, but given NP-hardness, we need to relax something. So there are two ways to relax things. So first one, we want to um, we can relax optimality condition, or we can relax the running time. Okay. So I'm gonna um, introduce like two such notions. So first one is called approximation algorithms. So recall that our, our objective function is a real valued, positive real valued. So given this, um, polynomial time algorithm A is called alpha approximation algorithm for problem P. I assume that P is a minimization problem. If uh, for every input i, the objective function value of the solution produced by our algorithm is at most alpha times the optimal value. So this number alpha is a greater than one and it is something called approximation ratio. Okay, so we can see that um, this um, has the same requirement for the running time. We still want um, that our algorithm runs in polynomial time, but we are relaxing the requirement for optimality. We will be content with approximate solution. Okay. So um, given this notion, let's say something about vertex cover. Okay. So this was a problem again. And our, I'm going to give like very simple greedy algorithm. Okay. So greedy algorithm is the following. So it's an iterative algorithm. And given an edge, given, given a graph, we are going to choose an edge in G. Okay. This is a blue edge there. 
And then we are going to add both endpoints to our vertex cover U. And then delete these two vertices from G, including all um, incident edges. And then we are going to repeat this process until G has no edge. So if you look at this example, we first choose this blue edge, delete these two vertices, and choose another this blue edge, delete, delete these two vertices, and then we are done. Okay. And at the end, we know that we removed four vertices. And then this looks um, hugely not optimal. Well, let's try to <laughs> say something about it. Okay. So it's very easy. Because um, let p be the number of blue edges, number of chosen edges during the algorithm. So in this example, p is 2. We, so we know that we deleted exactly 2 times v p vertices by design of our, our algorithm. And since these uh, blue edges are like completely disjoint, they don't share a vertex, we know that every vertex cover has to contain at least one vertex from each blue edge. So this concludes that optimal value should be at least p. So our um, set u, its size is uh, at most 2 times out. So this simple, stupid algorithm will give us two approximation. Okay. So two approximation is good. But the, um, the big open question in this field is that whether we can do better, like say even 1.99 approximation in polynomial time. So in other words, we can, we're asking whether this stupid algorithm is the best thing possible in polynomial time. The surprisingly, answer is maybe. So um, Dinur and Safra in Annals of Mathematics paper proved that um, it's NP-hard to get 1.36 approximation. So we can't get all the way down to like 1.01 or something. This is for vertex cover. Yes, for vertex cover. And then um, furthermore, um, some guy called Subash Kat, um conjectured the unique games conjecture. And then assuming this conjecture, he showed that for any constant epsilon greater than 0, we can't get 2 minus epsilon approximation algorithm for vertex cover problem. So for this work and other consequences of unique games, he got um, a Prize that happened in Seoul 2014, and he got this cool picture with our ex-president. <laughs> so this was the first notion, approximation algorithms. Okay. The second notion is called the fixed parameter tractable algorithms. So this one is slightly different. In, instead of um, relaxing optimality, we're going to relax running time. Okay. So recall that um, previously, time was only measured by the number of vertices n. But in this world, the in each input i will come with some parameter k. Okay. So the most natural parameter um, is to set k to be the optimal value of the instance. But we can, in theory, we can set other parameters as well. So given some parameterization, so the running time is, um, will be called OK, or like called fixed parameter tractable, or FPT, if it can be written as a g of k times polynomial in n for any computable function g. So, but the crucial, so we are going to be very lenient on the, the dependence on k, but the crucial fact is that this polynomial in n, so it, this one shouldn't depend on k at all. Okay. So for example, um, if, our, if our running is running times 2 to 2 to 2 to 2 to 2 to k times n cube, then we'll be fine because uh, um, this satisfies this property. But n to the log 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 k um, is not going to be OK, because like dependence on k and n are not separated. So this one looks like worse than this in some sense. But you can see that if k is a some constant, then this is like some constant times n cube, whether this is a n to the some large constant. So it, if n is much, much larger than k, this, you know, this one's going to be better. So this was the fixed parameter tractable algorithms. Okay. So with this notion, let me also say something about vertex cover. Okay. So it's the same problem except that uh, we have to specify our parameterization. So I'm going to set k to be the um, size of the optimal vertex cover. Okay. So if we do this, um, I'm going to give a very simple FPT, al FPT algorithm. Okay. So this algorithm has only one recursive procedure called the recurse G and L. So G denotes the current graph, and L denotes the number of vertices deleted so far, or the recursion depth of this recursive algorithm. So it does the following thing. So if G has no edge, then we know that um, we find the vertex cover. So we're done. Um, or if, if G has an edge, and if L is uh, at least K, that means that we already deleted at least K vertices, but we, we still have an edge in the graph. That means we made a wrong choice somewhere, so we return. We go one level up. Okay? Otherwise, if we have like, still some room to delete edges, then we're going to choose an edge UV. And then first, um, we're going to make a recursive call with g minus u and l plus 1, 
which means that we will try to put you in the vertex cover and, and further search. So if the first recursive call finds the vertex cover, then you're good. But otherwise, we're going to try the second recursive call with g minus add v and l, l plus 1. Okay? So this is a like very simple algorithm. And then in the beginning, we're going to call recurse um, the original graph n0. So the algorithm works as follows. So suppose that this is our original graph, and then we choose like this blue edge. And then somehow we decided to delete this um, blue vertex. Okay? After this, we, got, we are in this situation. So we deleted one vertex, so it's now, we are now in G, recurse G1. So we find another edge, this edge, and then we delete one vertex. Um, say like we first delete the blue vertex. Okay. Now, now we are in G2, but suppose that, yeah, so in this situation, K is 2. So since um, we already deleted two vertices, but there's, there are two edges left in the graph, so we know that we made a wrong choice somewhere. Okay. So we go back. And then for this edge, we now try to delete the right vertex. If we delete the right vertex, then there's no edge in the graph. So we know that we're done. Okay? So at the end, we know that we deleted these two vertices, and then this is a optimal vertex cover. Okay? So let me try to analyze this algorithm. Okay? So the first lemma says that we will always find an optimal vertex cover C. This is obvious because uh, assuming that we only deleted vertices in C, which is true because initially we didn't delete any vertex, then when you see an edge in the remaining graph, since C is a vertex cover, we know that at least one of two vertices must be in C. And then we are going to try both possibilities, so we can't be wrong. And then running time is easily um, bounded by 2 to the k times n, because um, um, each procedure um, makes two additional recursive calls, and then recursion depth is at most k. Okay. So this is an easy um, FT algorithm for vertex cover. Okay, so we got two approximation algorithm for vertex cover that runs in purely polynomial time n, and we got FPT algorithm that does the exact optimization that n runs in 2 to the k times uh, n. Okay, so this is good. So vertex cover is uh, in easy in some sense, but there are like other numerous problems um, that are unlikely to have an exact algorithm running in this FPT time. Okay, so the, for those problems, the question is how well can we approximate it in FPT time? So this is where the combination of approximation algorithms and FPT algorithms come from. Okay. So um, in my personal view, uh, approximation algorithms and FPT algorithms have been um, developed somehow independently by different set of researchers and by different set of problems. But um, very recently, um, there are like, many exciting combinations going on. So first line of work um, um, studies fundamental optimization problems um, such as a bi-click, dominating set, density case subgraph. And then this is a place where ideas from like fixed parameter tractability influences approximation algorithms. Okay. And then I want to also highlight the second line of work. Um, both of them were published in SODA this year. So they were basically studying the problem where we want to delete the minimum vert edges or vertices to make the graph coral. Okay. So they are somehow um, studying vertex or edge deletion problems. And then I want so these problems can be generalized to like more general vertex and edge deletion problems. And then actually, this is what I exactly meant by graph covering problems in the title. Um, but anyway, the goal is to delete the minimum number of vertices or edges from given graph G so that G satisfies some property. So this property um, can, be, can be like very um, broad. So we may want to make G planar or coral, where like we can make um, G not well connected with respect to some terminals, where we want that G becomes acyclic. And then I wanted to talk about the last two categories. So the fourth category says that um, let H be a fixed graph with constant size. Okay. Then maybe we want to destroy all copies of H as a subgraph, or like all induced copies of H. Okay. And as a final category, we may want to the partition the graph G into many small, um, many, many small components. Okay. So I'm going to um, talk more about this, um, these two last categories. So, I'm gonna, yeah, so let me define one problem called H transversal. Okay. So let H be a fixed graph with K vertices. So think of K as a sum constant. Then um, H transversal is a problem where given a large graph G, we want to remove the minimum number of vertices such that G doesn't have H as a subgraph. Not in this subgraph, just a subgraph. 
Okay. So in this example, um, suppose that G is this graph and then H is a triangle. So currently G has a many copies of triangle, but we know that if we delete these three vertices, then G doesn't have a triangle anymore. So these three vertices form a valid um, triangle transversal. Okay. So this um, problem obviously generalizes vertex cover because uh, we can set H to be just one edge. Okay, so um, this problem, we started to think about this problem after learning that numerous special cases for the, like various H have, um, in some sense, have been studied in computer science, mathematics, and operations research, and then we felt that we should study them in a unified framework. So, like one example um, is that if H is a clique with k vertices, and then suppose that we want to delete the ver edges instead of vertices, okay, then it's kind of related to Turang's theorem. Because like Turan's theorem is asking what's the maximum number of edges a graph has without continuing a k click, and which is uh, equivalent to saying that what is the minimum number of edges we need to delete from n click in order to not have a k click. Okay. So our um, problem can be interpreted as a computational version for Turan's um, theorem um, for arbitrary star graph G instead of n click. Okay, so this is one connection. And if you look at the approximability of H transversal, whenever H is a K approximation, um, we can easily see that it, this problem admits um, K approximation algorithm. So algorithm is a like, very simple generalization of vertex cover algorithm. So but K is the number of vertices? Yeah, vertices, H. yes. So find a copy of H, remove from G, and repeat until there is no copy of H. And then you, you can easily um, analyze that it's going to give us um, K approximation. Okay, so, but, so k is a trivial, but we can still ask how does approximability change depending on k, okay? Um, there's a k approximation, we want to do better, and so we can ask the same question. Okay, surprisingly, or not, um, the answer is maybe not if h is well connected. Okay, so um, we proved that two years ago, if h is a two vertex connected, then if you assume unique games, then k approximation is the best thing we can do. We can't have a k minus epsilon approximation algorithm. Okay. So this is a math seminar, so perhaps I don't need to remind you what two connected means, but cycle is two connected, and path is not. So you need to, like, yeah, you need to delete at least two vertices to make the graph disconnected. Okay. So, so this rules out like, every two connected graph, every two connected edge, as a possible candidate to admit a better approximation algorithm. So it remains to study only one connected graphs. And then I thought the among one connected graphs, two representative cases are k-path and k-star. Okay? So k-path is a just simple path with k vertices. And then k-star is a graph where there's a one center vertex and k minus one other vertices are just connected to center vertex. So both are trees. Okay, so for these problems, um, in the same paper, um, we also got low k approximation algorithm for k star transversal that runs in purely polynomial time. Um, but actually, uh, k path transversal was uh, slightly more tricky. So somebody asked um, whether we can do better than k approximation for k path transversal as an open problem. And then um, recently, I also showed that for even for k path transversal, we can get low k approximation algorithm that runs in um, FPT time. And then I'm going like, to um, explain why we need FPT time to do this. So this was uh, like this category, um, these three old copies of H. And then I'm going to also talk about um, the partitioning, graph partitioning problems. Okay, so another prob problem I'm going to talk about is called um, K vertex separator. So it's uh, even like simpler problem in some sense. Given a graph G, where we want to re remove the minimum of vertices such that each component has strictly less than K vertices. Okay. So in this case, if K is 3, and if we delete these yellow, yellow vertices, then we know that each connected component has at strictly less than three vertices. So these um, three yellow vertices form a valid three vertex separator. Okay. So actually, so uh, I'm going to mention it later, but this, um, this problem, algorithm for this problem, will be used um, as subroutine for the algorithm for k-path transversal. So this is how I arrived at this problem at the first time. So. Um, we can, yeah, you can easily see that the same like stupid greedy algorithm will give us k approximation algorithm for this problem. And this problem can be thought interpreted as a special case of graph partitioning problem, which has been one of the hardest topics in theoretical computer science. 
but um, previous algorithm focused on the case when k is very large, k is uh, linear in n. So if we just um, plug in the best previous algorithm for this problem, then we are going to get log n approximation. Okay. So for this problem, I got also got log k approximation algorithm that it both improves uh, both k approximation and log n approximation. And then it also has this FET um, running time. And then I'm going to tell you um, it's, it, it, it will be needed in some sense. OK. So um, this is another, like my very recent result uh, about graph partition problem. It's uh, called k-cut. So here we want to delete the minimum of edges such that g has uh, at least k components. Okay. Actually, this problem. I think among the problem in this talk, this problem has been like most studied. So there are like many algorithmic um, progresses for this problem. We have a n2d2k exact algorithm, both randomized and deterministic. And then we can do two approximation in n scale time. And this is based on greedy algorithm. And then this algorithm generalizes this algorithm to say that uh, we can get 2 minus epsilon approximation in time roughly n to the epsilon times k. And in a very recent work, um, we proved that we can get 1.99 approximation in FPT time. So this still looks worse than this. But if you, can, if you apply this to get 1.99 approximation, then the running time is n to the k over 100. So still, yeah. So if you assume that k is a small, it's much smaller, th smaller than n, then smaller than n, but like greater than 400 or something. Then, I th then we see that this algorithm is, will be faster than this. So this is one result, but actually I'm not going to talk about it anymore. So, so I think yeah, I believe that I explained every word um, in the title. And then I also said I got a FPT approximation algorithm for these three problems, path transversal, vertex separator, and k-cut. Okay. So is there any like, question about any definitions, like examples, or results? Mm -hmm. So, k, can you remind the k cut? So, you delete. Uh, we are deleting. k vertex separator? Vertex separator. We are deleting vertices. And then each connected component should have uh, a most, like, strictly less than k vertices. So, it, it's like every component should be very small. So, I got another. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. I, I have a kind of a stupid question. Because uh -huh. I, I don't really uh, think about this kind of stuff too much. So, you, you, one of your examples was a uh, vertex cover. Mm -hmm. Um, and you were talking about uh, these um, finite parameter tractable problems. Mm -hmm. So you gave an example where uh, your parameter was the optimum value. Yes. So is this sort of practical in any sense? Um, so actually, that's a very good question because, like, I'm gonna say, um, yeah, at the end, I'm gonna say that it's not gonna be practical. So that's why I focus like this, like k as the only parameter. So my, yeah. Um, but I think, yeah. The answer is like I don't I don't know how to justify it, <laughs> but I think like yeah it's a, it, it's meaningful in some sense because like yeah, otherwise we can't get any guarantee about this. Okay, so let's uh, begin to the proofs. <laughs> so I got okay, I got plenty of time. So as I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna forget about k-cut problem sadly, and I'm gonna talk about low k approximation algorithm for ver k vertex separator and k-path transversal. Okay. So let me first go to k-vertex um, separator. So k-vertex separator, I'm going to follow the route, which um, is like shared by almost all approximation algorithms. So I will first formulate this problem as an integer programming problem. Of course, it's going to be NPR. So we're going to relax it to linear programming, which you can solve uh, in polynomial time. If we solve LP, then we're going to get something called fractional solution. So we ideally, we want it to be like, we want them to be like 0 or 1, but it's going to be some like fractional values. So as a second step, we're going to apply something called rounding algorithm that converts an integral solution to like fraction, sorry, that converts a fractional solution to integral solution. So this is a typical route for like almost all um, approximate algorithms. Okay. So let me define this problem as an integer program problem. So I'm going to have like three types of variables. So xv um, is, uh, should be like b 0 or 1 for every vertex v. And it indicates whether v should be removed from the graph or not. Okay. And given xv as distances of vertices, so I'm going to, so given xv, so I'm going 
define distance in the vertices instead of edges. So given xv as distances, um, duv measures the length of the shortest path between v, u and v. And um, but I'm gonna say that the length of the any path includes the distance of both endpoints. Okay, so this is my convention. So meaning that two vertices adjacent that the length is two. Yes. Um, if yeah, if two vertices are adjacent and then if their values are all, all one, then their length is two. Uh, okay. <laughs> so and then f u v um, is uh, another like zero one variable indicates that both u and v are not deleted, and then they are in the same component. So if like if one of them is deleted, then f u v will be zero. So f u v will be one if both of them are not deleted, and then they are in the same component after deleting deleting these guys with one, okay? So for example, um, so distance between u and u should be xu by this definition. And then fuu should be um, one minus xu. Okay, so um, yeah, let's see further examples. So suppose that these are x values. So two vertices have one and two vertices have zero. Then we can see that distance between top and bottom is a Exactly to uh, exactly as a professor Um said, because like both both top and bottom has a x value one, and then of course like they are both deleted, so their f value f top and bottom is also zero. Okay. So if you look at the left and right, then we can see that the distance between left and right is one, because even though they both have value zero, um, any path from left to right has a has to go through at least like one vertex with value one. And then we know that after deleting these vertices with value one, left and right, even though they are not deleted, they will, they will be in a different connected components. Okay. So they have to, so F left and right should be zero. Okay. So given this, and then we can also easily see that. Can, can I see that? Uh -huh. So the X value of having one, so those vertices having one are deleted. Yes, right? yes. That's why I drew them in a shaded um, circle. So D for the left, right. Okay. So so why, why D left, right is one? So yeah. So so D left, right. So we look at the shortest distance distance bet between this guy and this guy, and then then so e either we go through here, we either go through here. The sum of the length of the vertices is one. So that's why the distance is one. Uh, so you count, you add those x values. Yeah, yes, yes. So that's what I meant by I'm going to interpret x as a sort of distances. So it's, it's sum of the x values. Of yeah. The yeah, and then, and then, yeah, we're going to, yeah, and then we're going to take, so we're going to try every, we're going to try like summing up for every path, and then we're going to take the minimum. That's what I meant by a series path. Yes, and then uh, yeah. Sorry for like confusion because like normally th we assign distance to edges, not vertices. But for a vertex relation problem, we should um, do this. Okay. Thank you for the good question. So, okay. So given this, and then we can easily see that f u v is a one if and only if d u v is a zero by our convention. Okay. So we can write this. Okay, so given this, um, our like integer programming is the following. So we want to minimize the summation of xv subject to these four constraints. So xv should be like zero or one, and then the uv should be the minimum distance between u and v. Fuv should be this value, and then most importantly, the fourth constraint says that for every vertex v in every vertex v, the number of the other number of vertices u that are in the same component with v. Is at most k minus one. Okay. So f um, f is supposed to indicate whether u and v are in the same component, and they, I mean, and then and they are not deleted. So yeah, so this expression for fixed v is a number of guys um, that are in the same component with v. Okay. So so is like yeah. So this is a. I'm, I, I'm claiming that this problem is exactly equivalent to like k vertex operator, if it can solve it. Okay. So everybody convinced? Cool. Okay. 
So of course, like this one is NPR to solve. So we need somehow relax it. So I'm gonna relax this pro problem to um, linear programming. So the only difference is that xv or xv can have a value between zero and one. Then given this, then d, f, all these guys will have like some fractional values. Okay. So and then yes, also we I needed to like mention how to um, write these two and three as a linear constraint, but I think like that can be easily done. So this is a linear programming, and then this one we can solve in polynomial time. So suppose that we solve this pro um, program to get optimal values. Okay. So we got these optimal values. So let um, let um, let's define f, large f, to be the summation of x value, which is uh, the optimal value for this LP. One thing we know that since our LP is a relaxation of IP, in a sense that every feasible solution to integer programming is a feasible solution for the linear program. Okay. And then we are doing minimization problem. So LP is searching over a like, bigger set. So which implies that our um, optimal value for LP, which is uh, f, is at most the size of the optimal k vertex separator, which I'll denote as alt. So if we return a k vertex separator of size of log k times f, then we, ca we know that this is uh, going to be a log k approximation. So this is the route we'll follow. Okay. So uh, the first step of the rounding algorithm is very easy. So we're going to remove all vertices v whose x value is uh, greater than 1 over a quarter. Okay. So there are at most like 4 f of them by the definition of f. So this is okay because like since we are aiming for lo log k approximation, so deleting like four times oft, we don't care about it. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that um, x v is at most quarter for every vertex v. Okay, so to describe the full rounding algorithm, I'm gonna define one thing called the circle. So again, imagine that every vertex v has a distance x v. Okay, then I'm gonna call I'm gonna define something called circle around the vertex v with radius x. So formally, circle has a two components. Circle has an interior and boundary. So interior is a set of vertices, um, v, such that distance between u and v is strictly less, th less than the radius x. Okay, so this, this is interior. And then boundary of this circle is a set of vertices v, such that x is sandwiched between the d, d w v minus x v and d w v. Okay. So this looks slightly technical and confusing. So let's see examples. Okay, suppose that um, this is a graph and then x values are written there. And then suppose that this is like, a blue vertex or a gray vertex is w. So if we draw a circle of a zero point radius of 0 0.05 around w, then we know that this circle can't even escape w because w has a distance 0.1. So the boundary is uh, only w and then there's no interior. Okay. But if you draw a bigger circle, then we have like a, b, c as boundaries and then interior is uh, just w. And then we can, do the even, we can draw an even bigger circle so that the boundary is DEFG and then interior is uh, this W, A, B, C. Okay. So this is a um, pictorial representation of these um, circles. So one key property of this circle is that if we draw a circle of radius half around any vertex, then the interior should contain at most two k vertices. So this is like key lemma, very simple to prove. So suppose that um, for some vertex um, W, its circle has uh, two, more than 2k vertices in the interior. Then, then by the definition of this interior, uh, we know that for each vertex U in the interior, by the definition, the distance between U and v, W and U should be at most 0.5. And then by our LP constraint here, f u v should be um, at least 0.5. Okay. Then we know that um, summation of uh, f, u, f u w over u should be um, strictly greater than k. That contradicts another constraint of our LP. Okay. So we got contradiction. Okay. So we know that every circle over radius half has uh, at most two k vertices in, in the interior. So given this, um, now let me just describe the rounding algorithm. So we're going to pick um, a radius x uniformly at random from, a, from an interval from 1 eighth and 1 quarter. Okay. And then we're going to randomly permute the set of vertices v. So this like random permutation is uh, also like crucial in, analy in analysis. 
So and then we're, after permuting, we're going to consider each vertex in this order. Okay. So when we consider one vertex w, we draw a circle around w of radius x. Again, it's very crucial that we use the same radius x for every, every circle. Okay. So if you look at one circle around w, so we are going to remove the boundary from the graph. So I'm going to call these vertices are removed by w. And then if we remove the boundaries, then we know that the interior will be disconnected from the graph. Okay? So we don't, we don't um, remove the interiors, but we know that interior will be disconnected from the rest of the graph. Okay? And then, so, so after like, um, ignoring these two sets, we proceed with the remaining graph. Okay? So this is an illustration of how the algorithm works. So again, this uh, blue vertex is uh, the first considered vertex. So we draw like circle, we remove the boundaries, and then the disconnect interior will be disconnected. Okay. And we draw another circle, we delete the interior, and then there's nothing left, so we're done. So at the end, we know that we deleted these like five green vertices. And then after deleting these five vertices, um, each connected component looks um, small. Okay. So let's try to analyze this algorithm. So when you say approximation algorithm here, uh, you still want to keep the property that each component has an, uh, less than k. But yes, yeah, yes. So, so approximation is the size of sets of vertices that you're deleting. Yeah, yes, exactly. So yeah, so now you're like going ahead of me. So, so yeah, I first, um, I'm going to claim that so each connected component, after ra this rounding, we'll have at most 2k vertices. It's kind of easy to see because like, each connected component will be like interior of some circle, and then even like the radius is uh, less than quarter. Okay. So by the previous lemma, we know that each connected component has a, has at most two k vertices, and then actually like um, later I'm gonna go down to like make it down to like k. Okay. So suppose yeah. So far we are um, fine at two k, and then like the more interesting part is to analyze how many vertices we deleted. So. Okay. So. Um, in order to study this, let's just fix one vertex V and study what's the probability that V is removed by this randomized algorithm. Okay, so let's um, say that this um, blue vertex is V. So the first question I'm going to ask is that whose circle can cross V? Okay. So this guy's circle can cross V, this guy's circle can cross V. So like there are many guys whose circle can possibly cross V and then possibly remove V. But one thing, we know is that one thing we know is that each circle's radius by our design is at most quarter. And then each vertex distance um, by our like, first step of our rounding algorithm is, is at most quarter. So if, so if W circle can cross V, then it means that distance between V and W is at most half. And then we can um, use our previous lemma once more to say that there are at most two K vertices whose circle can possibly cross V. So I'm going to only focus on these like 2K guys. And then I'm even going to order them such that vertex 1 is the closest to V, and then vertex um, 6 is the last vertex is the farthest from V. Okay. So after this ordering, let's even fix W. Let's say that um, ver this um, vertex 4 is a W. And then let's look at what's the probability that W circle can possibly cross V. So uh, I'm going to claim that this probability is at most 8 times xv. So I wrote something here. But this 8 comes from the fact that x is a sample um, from an interval of length exactly 1 over 8. And then you can, s so I wrote something here, but it's kind of intuitive because like, we are just growing circle around each vertex. And the probability that this circle crosses v should linearly depend on the length of the v itself. So this is a formal proof. But anyway, so if you fix V and W, the probability is at most A times XV. Okay. Okay. And in, in, the, in, in this example, um, the circle of radius um, 0 0.27 around vertex 4 crosses uh, vertex V. Okay. Then we can ask, whether um, is this condition sufficient um, for vertex W to remove vertex V? Okay. The answer is obviously no, 
because uh, some other vertices can remove v before w. And then, so let's say that vertex 1, assume that vertex 1 was considered ver before vertex 4. So here I drew the um, circle of the same radi radius around vertex 1. Okay. So since uh, vertex 1 is closer to v than vertex 4, then we know that if vertex 4's circle crosses the blue vertex v, then the, sa the circle around the, of the same radius around vertex 1 should at least cross v or entirely contain v in, in the interior. Okay. So which means that, so if vertex 1 was considered before vertex 4 in the random permutation, then whatever x value is, vertex 4 cannot remove v at all. Because it will be removed or disconnected um, by vertex 1 before. So this is like very, very simple but crucial um, analysis. So and then it's going to be the same for vertex 2 and 3. So if vertex 2 was uh, considered before vertex 4, then we know that we ca vertex ca 4 cannot remove v. Okay. So given fixed v and um, w1 through w2k, so, so the probability that v is removed is just a summation over probability that v is removed by wi. Okay. For each wi, this probability is a 8 times xv times the probability that wi is considered before w1 through wi minus 1. And then this probability is exactly 1 over i. So if we sum up all this, then the probability that v is removed is upper bounded by 8xv times the 2k harmonic number. So overall, we're going to get um, order of log k times xv. So this is like for one fixed vertex v. But, um, but we can use a linear iterative expectation to um, say that the expecting number of total vertices removed um, is at most um, log k times the summation of x values, um, which is a log k times f, which is at most log k times the optimal value. So we got, so we removed the log k times opt vertices, and then we know that each connected component has a, at most two k vertices. Okay, so how do we uh, make it k? So in order to make this k, we're gonna just run stupid exhaustive search on each component. Yeah, so far, so far there was a, the algorithm was like purely polynomial. There was like no like exponential dependence on k. Okay, so okay then we're gonna additionally remove maybe like optimal vertices. We don't care. So, so running time is uh, bounded by two to two k times n. So it's at least like it's much better than two to the n. So, so, so yeah, you can ask this like two to the two k comes from the very stupid algorithm. So it may be like um, circumvented or something. But actually, there are like um, two evidences. I'm not going to exactly tell you um, the results. But there are two evidences saying that um, it may be necessary. So two exact optimization algorithm. So this problem is, a co uh, is a proved to be like W on hard. So we can't exactly optimize in FPT time. And then if you um, believe another um, um, hardness of a fundamental problem, problem called densest case subgraph, then even log k approximation um, is unlikely in polynomial time in both k and n. So we can't get log k approximation algorithm in purely polynomial time. Okay, so these are like two um, evidences that, so this like 2 to the 2k, even though it's a very stupid, it may be necessary. Okay, so this was for like k vertex operator. And then, so, so let's go to k path transversal. Okay, so, I think you all know the problem, but to remind you the problem, so suppose that um, G is a transportation network, so each um, edge is a road, each vertex is a um, intersection. So somehow we want to put the minimum number of cameras at intersections so that um, no one can pass K intersection without being monitored. So we want to prevent crimes or like speeding, so we want to put the minimum number of cameras at intersections. So if you put these two cameras, yeah, 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 yellow vertices, then we know that the bad guy can five Pass five intersections without being cut, but we know that if we spend just one more camera, then no one can pass um, even three intersections. Okay, so this was a cute in, um, motivation for this problem. Anyway, so like first step of the algorithm is to compute any k approximation solution. As I said, um, whenever h is a k vertices, we got k approximation, so this is good. So what do we know about r? So r intersects every k path, and then the size of r is at most up times k. So currently, it's like very bad approximation. We only got the k approximation, so which is bad. 
Okay? But somehow this R will guide us to a better solution. Okay? And then for the sake of exposition, um, I'm going to color vertices in R as a red. Okay? That's the first step, very simple. So somehow, um, as I said, I'm going to use uh, uh, our algorithm for K vertex separator as a black box for the K path transversal. So we, let's try to make some connections between these two problems. Okay? So the first obvious connection is that if S is a K vertex separator, then S is obviously K path transversal. Because if we delete S, then if S is a K vertex separator, then deleting S makes every connected component um, having strictly less than K vertices. So there can't be any like, simple path of length K. Okay? So it means that optimal value for K path transversal should be at most the optimal value for K vertex separator. Okay. So suppose that S star is the optimal um, solution for K path transversal. Okay. Somehow, somehow, if S star is a K vertex separator as well, then we are done. Because uh, if S star is a K vertex separator, then we're going to run our previous algorithm to get um, low, low K approximation to K vertex separator. Okay. So the size of S will be bounded by low K times opt. And then um, S is uh, actually a ver K vertex separator, which is a K path transversal. So if S star is a K vertex separator, then we are going to be happy. Okay. But um, the reality is harsh. The only thing we know is that removing S star will remove all K path. And then even, if, even after removing a S star, there can be some components that may have uh, many vertices. Okay. So the example is this, this star graph doesn't even have a like four path, but it can have uh, arbitrarily many vertices. Okay. But if you look at this star, the one thing you can note is that, so it has a many vertices, but if we, ju if we just delete one more vertex, then the graph will be partitioned to many more vertices, and then each connected component has only one vertex. Okay. So the next, next natural question is to ask whether we can additionally remove some vertices on top of S star, so that um, each connected component is small. So this is our question, and then the answer is partially yes. So this is our key lemma for this algorithm. So we prove that there exists a set S prime of vertices such that S prime itself is small, S prime has at most opt vertices. And then if we remove S star and S prime together, then each connected component has only K cube red vertices. So this like red is only also a nuisance. So I wanted to bound the number of total vertices, but I only bounded the number of red vertices. But I'm going to deal with this issue later. So, and then, yeah, recall that this red vertices come from our K approximation solution R. Okay. So, so, we can find S prime in efficient time? No, we don't care. So, this is the only like, existence statement. So, this is what like, this key lemma roughly says. Okay. So, suppose that this is like whole graph, there are some red vertices. So, if K is 8, then I'm claiming that this like, one green vertex is the optimal 8-path um, transversal. Because if we delete this vertex, then the longest path has uh, seven vertices. I think so. So this guy is a S star. But we know that even after removing S star, we have uh, two components. And then these components are somehow large. Okay? They will have uh, like many red vertices. But this key lemma says that if we additionally remove like, these three yellow vertices, actually, and then I'm, yeah, I'm lying here, because uh, by definition, S, star, S prime should be smaller than S star, but ignoring this. Um, we say that if we r remove a um, small number of additional vertices, then the graph will be uh, further partitioned into many pieces, and each piece um, now has uh, only one red vertex. So this is uh, roughly what key lemma says. Okay. So let's try to prove it. Okay. So yeah, uh, first remove SR from the graph, then we know that there's no K path. So, uh, so as uh, Jesus asked, uh, I, will show, I will show how to remove at most opt vertices so that each connected component has, at, has only k cube red vertices. So I'm going to give an algorithm to do it, but this algorithm doesn't have to be efficient because um, I'm only proving the existence statement. Okay. So here's how I do. So let's see be a connected component with more than k cube red vertices. So, okay. so we need to do something here. Okay, so what I do is really simple. So take uh, any longest path p from this component and then remove all vertices in P. So at the same time, for the sake of analysis, so we're going to charge each red vertex in C by 1 over K square. Okay. Then we know that in each iteration, 
we know that the amount of charge is at least p because p the long side of the longest path is at most k, but the amount of charge is a number of red vertices uh, um, multiplied by one over k squared, which is a uh, greater than k because the c has a more than k cube red vertices. Okay. So given this, so I mean this process will eventually um, eventually terminate because we are deleting vertices. So the all, the next question I'm going to ask is that how many times a sing, single red vertex will be charged? So if we somehow manage to show that each red vertex is charged at most k times, then I'm claiming that we are done. Because the total number of removed vertices by this procedure is at most the total charge. So, so the total charge is at most the number of red vertices divided by the 1 over k square times k, because um, each red vertex is charged at most k times. So this is um, equal to R over K, and then since R is a K approximate solution, so this is at most out. So to prove this lemma, I only need to prove this claim. Okay, so this, this claim is also very easy. So to prove this claim, I'm going to prove another like, a very simple fact. Oh, that can, you, can you explain again why, why the, the last uh, R over K is at most out? That was uh, the, our definition of R. We found R was uh, our k approximate solution. So yeah, this claim was uh, based on simple fact that when you delete the longest path in one component, the length of the longest path stri strictly decreases. In other words, um, the any two longest path in one connected component must share a vertex. Okay. So this is very easy to see because uh, otherwise, if there are like two longest path in the connect same con connected component. Um, in the, they are in the same connected components, so they must be somehow connected. Then we find the longer path. Okay? So however they are connected, we can always find the longer path. So this fact is true. These two are equivalent facts, uh, in, by the way. Okay? So given this, um, let's try to um, prove the final claim. So look at one red vertex V. Then we know that whenever this vertex is charged, it means that by design of our algorithm, so it is charged um, only if a longest path in V's component was removed. But if we do this, the length of longest path in V's component is strictly decreased. Okay. After removing a star, it was initially K, so V can be charged at most K times. So we proved the final claim, and then we also proved the key lemma. Okay. <laughs> so this is our key lemma, but still this like red vertices is uh, somehow concerning. Because like I said, I said I wanted to apply um, our algorithm for K vertex separator. So my solution is to slightly tweak the problem um, from k vertex separator to some generalization. So k red vertex separator is a like, um, somehow independent problem where the input is a graph G and set R of red vertices. So only in this slide, R, is a, R can be any subset of V. And then the goal is to remove the minimum of vertices such that each connected component has at most k, perhaps strictly less than k vertices, red vertices. So we can see that this is a generalization of a um, k vertex separator because we can take R to be entire set V. So this looks like um, serious generalization, but I'm going to tell you details about actually the same technique, verbatim, will give us um, low-key approximation. So, so we're going to use actually um, our approximation algorithm for this problem. Okay. So given this uh, algorithm for this problem, so then we can say we can extract something out of key lemma. Okay. So key, key lemma says this. Okay. But so. Let R be the like R K approximate solution we computed earlier. So if you look at K cube red vertex separator in the original graph with the um, with computed R, then what this key lemma says is that so if you look at this problem, the optimal value for this problem is at most two times opt. Because we there is exists a solution S prime union S star, which has uh, at most two opt vertices. And then we know that if we delete these two vertices, then each connected component has at most k cube red vertices. Okay. So this lemma ensures that opt sub red is at most two times opt. So we're going to use our glorious um, low-k approximation algorithm for k cube red vertex separator um, to get low k cube times opt red um, vertices. So if you lose another factor of six, that's going to be another low k times opt vertices such that each connected component has uh, only k cube red vertices. Okay. So this is like somehow significant progress. But still, but there are, each connected component can be very large. It has only k cube red vertices, but, but each can be large. Okay. So somehow we need to um, finish up. 
So now um, each connected component has a, at most k cube red vertices. But what was the red vertices anyway? Okay. So red vertices are like vertices from R, which was a um, k, vertic k path transversal. So we know that if we remove all red vertices in each component, then there's no k path. So I'm not going to show you details, but actually it's a tri so yeah, so within each component, the optimum value is at most k is cube. Okay? So I'm not going to show you details, but there's are, are like a simple generalization of a FPT algorithm for vertex cover. We'll um, find uh, the optimal path transversal in each component in time um, k to the k cube times n. Okay? So finally, yeah, we got low k approximation algorithm that runs in um, k cube, 2 to the k cube log k times n. And then there's some evidence that we can't do um, in purely polynomial time because of, uh, finding a k path is NPR for large k. Kay. So yeah, these are my two results for k path transversal and k vertex operator. So yeah, um, in this talk, I defined the FPT algorithm and approximation algorithms, and I showed examples for vertex cover. And then. And then I um, showed some FPT approximation algorithms for graph covering problems, including k path transversal and k vertex separator. And I also claimed our algorithm for k cut, even though I didn't say anything about it. So I mean, there's yeah, there are like many problems. The, the only the obvious one is that are they the best approximation factor in FPT time? So so far there's like no hardness results. So every low k here can be like some constant. And then 1.99 here can be like 1.001. Okay. So hardness is wide open. And another interesting problem is uh, H transversal. So I said um, whenever um, H is too connected, we can't be too approximation. But, we, um, but for path and star, I said we can get log k approximation. So um, one can conjecture that we can get log k approximation, log k affinity approximation algorithm for any tree. So I think it may be doable, and then it's an uh, interesting direction. Okay. So if I step back and then think about the uh, like general FPT approximation algorithms, um, I think it, I, I personally very like it, because like, it opens a huge room, room for creative applications or various algorithmic tools. So FPT problems itself um, opens a lot of room for like, this many mathematical tools, depending on how you parameterize uh, the problem. And then if you uh, bring approximate algorithms, then you can do much more. And to, so personally, to answer, um, I think, your question, so um, I like to param like parameterize a problem by some like, problem-specific inherent parameter. So actually, so even before like, I started to study uh, um, fixed parameter tractability, these problems were called k-cut, k-path transfer, k vertex separator so far. So these problems like, had k in the problem. So that's why I chose like, k. So personally, I'm not like, a big fan of uh, parameterizing by oft, perhaps with the same reason. But, um, but the issue is that if you want to um, look at these problems in a, in, a, in a unified way, every problem has opt. So, so there's like, opt is like universal parameterization. You, you can parameterize every problem by opt. But somehow these um, prob problem specific inherent parameters, we can't, there's like not, no easy way to um, view them as a unified framework. So my like meta open question is that is there any like any systematic way to view these uh, problems, these parameterized problems, or like approximation algorithm tools? Okay. So in some sense, H transversal is one of these um, class of problems we can study in a unified way. But um, if you have any more thought, let me know. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>